Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe, and I'm adjunct faculty at Columbia College Chicago in the Interior Architecture program. Shout out to all my students. I hope you're doing well today. And everybody who's watching this video, I hope you're doing well. It's a sunny winter day here in Chicago. It's a little warmer than it's been. It's uh, it's actually in the in the 20s. It's been in the teens and lower. So today feels like a heat wave, actually. All right. So what are we going to cover today? Today we're going to look at using Photoshop to make a custom sky. And you see, this is something similar to what we're going to end up with. All right, before we jump into the tutorial, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go to my channel and click on the red button to subscribe and click on the bell to receive all the notifications. There's something for everyone here. Tons of video and new videos being updated all the time. Also, connect with me on Instagram at my first name, Alfonso, underscore my last name, Peluso. Love to connect with you. Come see what my students and I are up to, what type of work we're creating. See what we're doing at Crown Hall at IIT and Columbia College in Chicago. All right, so today's topic is on making a custom sky. And... We also want to make a dramatic sky. So these skies are going to be used for renderings. And I have a few companies, rendering firms, I should say, that are making some really great renderings. And when you go through the renderings, some of the renderings really have some great skies. Like here's one. This one is pretty cool with the atmosphere and the fog. So as you go through these, you see some really, really neat skies. This is a neat rendering here. Another one there. So that is, this is, this is Flying Architecture. Then there's Pixel Flakes is another company that specializes in rendering and animation. They have some really great renderings there and some, some really cool dramatic scenes and dramatic skies. Another company is Hayes Davidson out of London. Some really good work on their site as well. Some dramatic skies as well. And then Visualizing Architecture is another great visualization website where they have some really good projects. Let's go to their work actually. Alright, so let's jump into the tutorial. Alright, so in Photoshop I'm going to start with a new file. So I'm going to go to File New. And I'm making this 11 by 17, so 17 wide by 11 high. And I'm going to make the resolution 300 pixels per inch. I'm also going to name this so Custom sky call it a background okay so 17 wide by 11 high 300 pixels per inch and I'm setting the background contents to transparent that's not always the default so I'll set that to transparent click OK okay so we're gonna go through a lot of great tools in Photoshop that will be helpful for making this custom sky but also helpful for whatever work you're doing in Photoshop and we're gonna be very organized with our layers and we're gonna name these layers as we go so this is gonna be my blue gradient so we're gonna start with a blue gradient and the way the gradient tool works if I click on the gradient tool it's there you might it might be buried under 
a paint bucket or something like that but you can find the gradient tool and it uses the foreground and the background so you see this little image here of a gradient from black to white of my foreground the background so that's this first option there's also a foreground to transparent which is also a nice way to use the gradient okay so I'm gonna keep that at foreground the background okay so I'm gonna set my foreground I'm gonna set it to a dark a dark blue and I'm gonna set my background to now what I can do is I can get in that blue color range that I just chose by moving my cursor out of this window over the foreground background I can use the eyedropper to get the color that is being used for the foreground and I can grab a lighter version of it okay so so this is foreground background since my foreground is the dark blue that's gonna be the top of my sky so I can put my cursor at the very top and I can hold my shift key if I want this gradient to go from top to bottom and I can add in that blue gradient now if I drag just a little bit it's gonna make the foreground color just a little bit on the canvas as we see there and if I go really long outside of the canvas I have to zoom out let me zoom let me zoom out for that. If I go really long outside of the canvas, then I get less of the gradient. Okay, so I'm going to just go from top to bottom here. That's my blue gradient. Okay, so I'm going to use some blending options with another gradient. I'm going to make a red gradient. So I'm going to make a new layer. So some, some shortcuts, uh, let's look at some shortcuts today in, in Photoshop. So shift control N. I know it's easy to just go down here and pick a new layer, but I like to learn some Photoshop, um, some Photoshop shortcuts. So shift control N and that's on a windows. So if shift command N, on a Mac, so Shift Control N, Shift Command N will make a new layer. I'm going to call this Red Gradient. Okay, that layer is sitting above my blue gradient layer. I'm going to change my foreground backgrounds. I'm going to make it maybe, maybe it's more of an orange. and I'm going to change my foreground. I'll use that eyedropper. Okay, and use the gradient tool. Okay, so there we have this reddish orange gradient. I can always change the hue saturation. I can always go to image, adjustments, hue saturation, and I can change the color of this gradient by just sliding the hue across. I can saturate it. I can saturate it or desaturate it as needed. I can brighten it or darken it. Okay, so those options will be available for me. I'll start with this. Okay, so these where it says normal here, this is a pull down for what are called blending options. And there's a lot of different blending options. It's going to blend this layer with the ones below it. So I can use off, I can use overlay, I can, you can go basically just go through all of these and see which ones you, which one you like. And I'm gonna, the one that I used for the, the, the one that I showed at the beginning of the tutorial, I think it was a vivid light. So let's check that out, this vivid light. I'm going to desaturate this red gradient layer. And I'm going to change the hue a little bit. I want to make it a little, a little bit red.
I can also change its opacity. So make it a little bit subtle. Okay, so the other thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some background atmosphere. And I'm going to do this background atmosphere with some, some clouds. So I'm going to make a new layer. So sh shift control N or shift command N. And this one is going to be called clouds. And this is going to use my foreground and background layers to make clouds. So I'm going to go ahead and change the foreground background colors. I'm going to change this to black and white. So I can always click on this little icon in the lower left. This will set it back to the default foreground background of black white. And I can go to main menu filter and I can go down to I can go down to where are my clouds I go down to render so main menu filter render I can go down to clouds okay so because it's black and white it's making this black and white cloud layer and I can take the transparency of that down okay so I'm just looking for a little bit of atmosphere not much so I'm taking it way down Okay, just a little bit of atmosphere. All right. The next thing I'm going to add is I'm going to add what I'm using or thinking about as a light source. So what I'm going to use for this light source is I'm going to use a lens flare. And I'm going to put that on this red gradient layer. Could go on the blue gradient layer. So let's take a look at that. So I'll make the red gradient layer current and I can go to main menu filter go down to render and choose lens flare okay so you see um, as I move my cursor around we can see this lens flare so this is when light goes into the lens of a camera you'll get a lens flare when you're taking photos so there's different types of lens flares as I go through and click on these types there's also a brightness of how bright that lens flare can be. So I'm, we're going to use some tools later to actually brighten it up. So I'm going to keep it a, not so bright. Okay. Just looking at some of the options. I'm going to go with the first one. Okay. So there's our, there's our lens flare. All right. Next thing we're going to look at doing is bringing in some actual clouds from an image and take a look at how we can do that. Okay, so if I go over to the web and I just Google search, if I Google search sky clouds under images, I will get a whole bunch of images. And I'm going to go, I'm looking for something that has some depth to it. So like a f uh, clouds in the foreground, some clouds in the midground, and some clouds in the background, something that's creating depth. So I'll go ahead and choose this one. I'm going to right click and open image in new tab. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. Okay. I already have that one saved, so I'll overwrite it. Okay, and I'm going to open that up in Photoshop. Okay. All right, so let's talk about the resolution of this. I want to match the resolution of this sky to this one. So I'm going to go to main menu image, image size. Okay, so this, this resample can be a little bit tricky. It can be your friend in some cases, and it can be your enemy in others. 
So what I mean by that, when it's your enemy is when you're making things smaller. Okay, when you're making image sizes smaller, it's your enemy. So if free sample is on and I change this to 5 inches, it's keeping the resolution at 72 when actually that resolution should go up. So if this is 10 and I take resample down, so it's 10 at 72, or I take resample off, I should say, when it's 10 inches and I go down to 5, this resolution is going to increase. So when you're making images smaller, it's your enemy. But when you're making them larger, it's your friend. So I'm going to click on resample and I'm going to make it the 17 at 300. Okay. And it's not it's not NASA technology. It doesn't actually make the image super clear at 300 pixels per inch, but it does size it up, size it up. It makes it a little bit blurry. Okay, so I'm going to use that. All right. So control 0 will zoom out all the way or command 0. Okay, I'm going to use something called select color range. Okay, and with select color range, I'm going to pick on, I'm going to use the eyedropper to pick on the cloud. So go ahead and pick on the cloud. And there you see the selection. So if I go to the right, it selects more of the image. If I go to the left, it selects less of the image. So it's just something you got, you need to experiment with. Okay we can leave it there see what that does okay so I'm gonna control C and I'm gonna go over to my Photoshop file and I'm gonna control V and paste it in okay now we have some clouds I'm gonna pick those clouds up alright so that's looking pretty neat alright I'll get rid of this one alright so I'm keeping very organized with my layers. I'm going to call this one sky clouds. And I'm going to make it transparent by taking down the opacity. All right. That's looking really good. Okay. Next. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to scale this these clouds down just to give me more depth. Right now I don't have a lot of depth because the clouds are, are pretty large in the image. So I'm going to make sure my sky clouds layer is current. I'm going to use the shortcut control T or command T for scale. And I am going to scale this down. I, in the new versions of Photoshop you don't need your shift key. and the older versions you need a shift key to keep it scaling. So I'm going to go ahead and scale that down. So about there. And I'm going to make a copy of this layer. So to make a copy, the shortcut to make a copy is Control J or Command J. Control J or Command J will make a copy. So we have the copy. And I'm going to take it and just move it over. Okay. So what you see when I copied it and moved it over is you see a you see a seam there is a seam in this okay so what I'm gonna use to get rid of the seam is I'm gonna use a clone stamp the clone stamp tool so I'm gonna make a new layer so I always wanna put my clone stamp objects or my clone stamp fix on a new layer so it doesn't ruin the other layers so I'm gonna make a new layer shift control n or shift command n I'm gonna call this sky fix okay what else is important about this when I this is the clone stamp here it could be hidden under some of these other tools so this is clone stamp and I am going to make sure that my sample is all layers that's not the default typically so I'm gonna make sure that that is all layers okay and I'm gonna make the the brush size so you see the circle on the screen I'm gonna make the brush size larger so I can go to the pool down here and I can make the brush size bigger okay that might be too big <laughs> it jumps pretty quickly alright and I'm just making sure my hardness is zero 
I'm just using one of these soft, soft round brushes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sample from the left side here. So I'm going to press my Alt key to sample, and then I'm going to move that over. Okay. So I'm just you saw I just I didn't click several times. I just clicked once and moved my mouse up slowly. So I'll take a sample from over here and just softly place that here. Okay, so now the seam is gone. All right. What else can we do to the sky? Something we can also look at is we can look at the blur tool. So I'm going to I want to blur these skies, the sky clouds and the sky copy. So I'm going to put those together on the same layer. So I'm going to merge those two layers together. So I'm turning off all of the other layers but the sky clouds. And I'm going to use a tool from main menu. Or I'll do it over here, actually. I'll just right click and I'll choose merge visible. OK, so merge visible. I turned off all the other layers and I'm choosing merge visible. So it merges that into one layer. OK, I can turn all these back on. OK, so with on the sky clouds layer, I'm going to go to my main menu filter. I'm going to go under blur and I'm going to choose Gaussian blur. OK, so it works by pixels. So if I wanted to see this, the, the clouds are going to be really hard to see in here, even if I zoom way out because they're, they're, they're transparent. Now I start to see some of them as I zoom out. But what's nice is it updates in real time. So this is a radius of zero. If I crank this up, you see it blurs those clouds. So it gives it a nice soft, soft feel. Okay, so I'm going to settle on something like that. Okay, a couple more little tools we can use on the sky. One of them is we can use what's called dodge and burn. So a dodge will lighten an image, and a burn tool will darken the image. So I'm going to start with the burn tool. and since my light source is coming from the upper right, I'm going to darken this left side of the sky. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to do that burning. I'm going to do it on the red gradient layer because most of these other layers are transparent. Okay. So when I merge the sky clouds together, it made that opacity 100%, but it's still transparent from the original setting. Okay, so red gradient. So I'm going to set my size of the brush larger. And I'm using the soft round brush. Okay, to make this go away, you just click out of it. And the range for my burning, what am I burning? I can burn the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights. So I'm going to just work with midtones for right now and I'm going to you'll see that it's going to make this side darker as I move my cursor across it so it's going to do some burning. And then on the right side I'm going to change this to dodge which is going to make this area brighter as I move across it. Okay, and it's just it's just doing that layer. So that's something to keep in mind. I don't want to ruin my lens flare, flare like that, so I'll just go around the lens flare. And I can do that on other layers. I can do it on the sky cloud layer. Okay, I'm going to choose highlights for that because there really are no midtones to to, to darken up. Make sure that layer is current. All 
Okay, I'm not getting too much of a result there. Let's look at burning this other side. All right, we'll be able to use that a little better on the on the foreground when we make a foreground. Okay. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is look at what if I have a ground plane. Okay. So in most renderings you're going to have some sort of ground plane, so I'm going to add one in. So I'm going to make a new layer, shift control N or shift command N on a Mac. Okay, I'm going to call this ground plane and I'm just going to make a selection okay so I'm going to put that ground plane about here okay I'm trying to envision a horizon line okay so I'm going to change my foreground background I'm going to work with like a a ground color like a beige a beige color use my eyedropper okay so I'm gonna use the gradient tool okay so I won't use this foreground transparent but I want to just show you how it how it looks how it works so if I do foreground transparent I can make a gradient like this and it makes it goes from that foreground color to a transparent color okay I'm gonna use foreground background now you don't always have to go straight up and down I can make a gradient from right to left or left to right or any diagonal and it will make a gradient I'm going to choose again. I'm going to keep the light source coming from the right. So I am going to make my gradient from right to left. And I kind of put it on an angle there. Okay. Control D or Command D will deselect. I am going to desaturate that. So I'm going to go to Main Menu Image Adjustments hue saturation desaturate that color a little bit you want to you want to stay away from really heavy saturated colors especially with a background because they pop forward you want the background to sit back so you want to use some desaturated colors desaturated colors are typically better in visualizations better in renderings okay so I'm going to do some dodge and burn on this just to give it a little bit of feeling a little bit of like a hand feeling or like a watercolor feeling so I'm gonna make sure my ground plane layer is current and I'm gonna go ahead and do a little burning now this is a this is a situation where on the left side that's the highlights so I'm going to change that to highlights and I'm going to burn burn some highlights and and then I can go over to shadows where it's a little bit darker and burn that area. Let's change that to midtones. We we I've seen some neat stuff in there with the midtones. So just giving it some feel. Okay. I'm going to dodge, do some some dodging. Change this to mid tones. It's kind of lightening. What I'm doing is lightening up where it's meeting the background. Okay. The other thing that I want to do where it meets the background is I want to I don't want this sharp edge that I'm getting at the very top. So I'm going to go ahead and use the eraser tool and I'm gonna pick one of these soft round brushes pretty pretty decent uh, pixel size a little bit bigger it just makes that big jump okay 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to hold this and start to move it down close to the sky. I mean not close to the sky but close to the line. So I'm going to fade out that ground plane. Okay. Let's let's try this with a bigger with a bigger size brush and see how that works. Okay, so that's just fading out that line. Okay. All right, this is driving me a little bit crazy over here, so I'm going to burn a little bit more in there. Try to get rid of some of that. Yeah, that looks much better because I was seeing the squiggly line of the S in there. All right, so that's our that's our custom sky. What else do I want to say about it? So it's a little bit different than the than the one I showed. Uh, this one is pretty strong with the red color. I can go in to the red gradient layer and I can go to main menu image adjustments hue saturation and I can take down the saturation a little bit. All right, that looks that looks a little bit better. Some of those blues are coming in. All right, so that's our custom sky. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Tell me why you liked it. Also, if you haven't subscribed, uh, a big picture of my head is going to come up in the upper left. Go ahead and click on that image of my head. And I'm going to put a link to some other tutorials on the right hand side. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.